if you look at somebody doing a bicep curl or a girl, like now the best thing is look at a girl doing an exercise. Yes. You're not looking at the exercise, you're looking at the girl. Yeah. <laughs> okay? That's true. And my thing was, if I want people to see the exercise, I have to make it so that it's fun, but they can't be looking at the person. Nowadays, when people give exercises, like if you go to somebody that says, give me some exercises for your shoulder, you never take into consideration how much time it takes to do these exercises, like warm up. Very few people do warm up because it just takes too much time. You know, you have to ask people what your goal is, how many days a week you want to train, what, how many hours a day you want to train, and then you can start to design a program because, and the same thing with this hour program. Do an hour a program. You can't do anything in an hour. You can't go into a gym and, and, and hope, like, we're empty here because we're a key club, so it spreads out our members through the whole period, like, through the whole seven days. A lot of guys like to work out after eight o'clock, you know, and a lot of guys work out on weekends. I mean, it's just, they have a real kind of difference of when they want to work out. So Fred, I'm going to start by saying welcome to uh, Tres Empoden. And it's for me first time doing English in a long time. But Fred, um, you're many things. And uh, one of the things is a co-owner of this amazing facility, Bear Cave Training Center, but also been uh, developing uh, ab mat. And that's for muscling the abdominal muscle. But your journey in life started in the States before you got here to Norway. Correct. And now you have uh, been established and been here in Norway for how many years? 20 years, 21 years. Yeah, yeah. And I think uh, we have been ranting and talking a lot of different things, but what are some good, healthy things people should do in general to stay fit when I can't when I can't train yeah the hardest thing about training is you have to have a goal to train you have to say well my this is a, again my opinion you have to want to train so if you want to train then the issue becomes where am I going to train what am I going to who am I going to listen to the issue be, here becomes do I go to one of the big training centers Am I afraid to go to the small, like the Bear Cave? We use the Bear Cave, for example. We're a serious training place, but we're serious if you want to train for a half hour a day or you want to train for three hours a day. But the culture in Norway still is, I'm going to go to the big training facilities. But then you have no idea what you're doing. There's always somebody in the training facility that's going to dominate it. And the people that are going to give you answers are 20-year-old kids who mean well but they have no experience. So when we started the Bear Cave, we asked ourselves that question, what do people want? And it's a time that rolls around where people have to understand that if you want to be a good cross-country skier, do you go to the local cross-country shop and talk to one of the girls that's been there for a month that happened to be good in skiing? Or do you go talk to somebody like Roger Grubin who's been like a coach for 20 years, and you take a ride out to Ciudad, where he's from, you take a ride out there with your child, and you say, my child wants to be a good skier. Can you give us some hints of who we can talk to in Christian Sun? So you take the effort, then you can decide from there. And in the fitness world, you have to say, what do I want? And you just can't blindly go into a club and I'm gonna do aerobics, because you're not gonna do it long. You're going, to, you're going to go in and you go on the treadmill and you hear all the stories if I do aerobics so I went in and I did the aerobics but there's you have no goal with it and there's nobody there to give you a goal so for me when people want to become like start out in fitness you have to at least want to but you also have to understand the pitfalls that you're going to hit along the way and the biggest pitfall is 
You're not going to have anybody encourage you. You're just going to have somebody who wants to take your monthly membership. That was here, now. It was the same in the United States for a thousand years. You can look at all the marketing concepts that are here now were in the U.S. when I was there 20 years ago. Join in for $20 a month or $5 a month for three years. They just want your money up front because they know 90% of the people that come in to join in January won't come back or 80% don't come back. And the rest of the 20%, probably another 10% don't last another three months because they have no goals and they have nobody to say, what do you want? We have people that come in here with a bad back, for example. Like you could go into that. The doctor will say, you need to do some exercise. But a physical therapist has no time to give you exercises. They mean well and they know what they're doing. But you're going to go in and you're going to get three hours worth of exercise. You come in here, I can give you two exercises that might help you. And mostly when I give it to people, they go, I never heard of that before. It's called a reverse hyper and a hyper extension. And our thing here is I want you to do the exercises correctly. And I'm here. So that's what we do. We don't get paid in 15 minute intervals or 20 minute intervals like a physical therapist or a doctor because that's the system. It's not their fault. It's the system. You get 20 minutes with the physical therapist. That's it. Because then that's all he gets paid for. You come into a gym and you have a 20 year old person who's enthusiastic, they've never been around. They just went to a school, got a certification, never trained anybody, never had any failures, never watched somebody that they trained for a year, like what's their ups and downs. They just haven't been around long enough. So, so I think, Fred, um, if you have like, um, if you have a passion for strongman or if you have a passion for CrossFit, you, you probably heard there is like this discussion, is a CrossFit, is a strongman, it's like they're um, kind of not best buddies, if you could say it like that. But I think training strongman and CrossFit is good for your body both. Wouldn't you agree? Yeah, but again, now you get into time. CrossFit started, CrossFit, even though there's a lot of criticism about it, what you have to look at is the positive stuff. Everybody wants to look at the negative, everybody wants to nitpick. CrossFit started men doing aerobics, which they never did before. You could never, I could never get guys to come into an aerobics class. When, when we open speaker and you could go to speaker now, you will never find a guy in there doing anything that makes him sweat or his heartbeat. Women would never lift weights. They, could, they had to have a group situation. The CrossFit got women to lift weights. Now you see women are starting to lift weights and they're enjoying it. Okay, a lot of people get injured and there's a lot of, but on the other side, it gets a lot of people started. When you come to strongmen, strongmen is becoming real popular now. I don't know from a competition point of view, but let's look from a woman's point of view. Guys have always tried it, you know, like the big thing for guys for years was, I'm a bodybuilder, but then I get tired of like, I can't diet, like my example, for me, I could never diet. I, you know, I lived in the United States, food was cheap, and why do I have to eat chicken and rice every day when I could go out to dinner and have like a, a, a three course meal for 58 kroner, you know, I mean, and even today I can go to McDonald's with my daughter and for 150 kroner, but then you have to be into cost hold and that's tough but when it comes to strong men guys have always been I'm a bodybuilder but I'm not growing because I never ate right and that was my I was always my issue I love training I trained all the time but I could never eat right like if you see people that are bodybuilders like all the stuff on TV to eating try it for a couple of days I tell people try eating perfect for two or three days then you'll see. Mm. And then the bodybuilder guys said, oh, this is too much work. So they would go into they would go into powerlifting for a while. That was back then. Now what's happened is instead of going into powerlifting, strongman has become here in Norway has become really cool. Mm. And more and more gyms like we just 
put a rack for atlas balls in. We have strongman devices here. The most interesting thing about this is women now, because they've been they've been introduced to weightlifting, women now realize that they get stronger. It's cool to be physically stronger. Women have always been dominated by men, mostly because men are physically stronger. When I was in the States, I trained flight attendants. And then they started weight training. And they were with all rich guys in first class all the time. And, they would, and when they started weightlifting, they would say, it really makes me feel more self-confident when I walk into first class and I know I can out bench press these guys. So no matter how much money they had, I was physically stronger. So then I had something up on them that maybe I would never get, I'm never gonna make a million dollars. And I think that's what's becoming popular here in Norway now. Women want to be stronger and when they get stronger, Aerobics don't make them feel bad. I mean, it makes them feel good. They get some aerobic work, but now you're in Norway. The culture of Norway is people here are always in good shape. I mean, you can take anybody out to the hit or to walk in the woods. You know, in the United States, we never walked any place. Everything is drive across the parking lot. <laughs> elevator. <laughs> elevator. You know, people say, well, we walk the stairs. And I'm like, well, walk the stairs, there's an elevator. But now the strong, the strength, it goes on is becoming more and more of a, a challenge or not even a challenge but a mystery and like women saying yeah maybe I do want to be strong but now I got to find somebody who will do it within my guidelines I don't want to be lifted four times a week and doing straight training I just want to be maybe work out for a period of time every day or twice a week and be able to have somebody say this is right and this is wrong whenever the women come in here I train they have more different strange programs that they come up with. Everybody gets these programs on the internet that I don't know where they come from. But when you start to break it down logically from a, like from my experience of 40 years, you say, well, why do you do this? Like if you look back at Arnold's programs, let me use Arnold as the name, you look back 40 years when he was training, the stuff that he did is really the same now and it still works. You just have to be able to say, how much do I do? Where do I fit it in? How many days a week can I train? Those kind of things. And then from there you go, strongman, CrossFit, you'll find some place in it. And CrossFit has become really good for stuff, you know? Yeah, and I, and I think so too, Fred, that um, one of the big things with strong men and strong women uh, uh, here in, in Norway now is that the, the, the community and the pushing of each other's competitors is like no other sports that I ever been in and seen like uh, if it's like a small competition in Valhalla in Tvedestrand where uh, uh, Aril Haugen and Odd Haugen and Sven Carlsen and all these no, no Norwegian have com uh, competed before when when I compete my competitors cheer for me and when they compete I cheer for them there is a very special community in the strongman uh, at least in in for instance competitions you know and you have to with that community it's because they're all weirdos and now what you're doing with that is you take gyms like ours and now we're building a whole part of the gym for strongmen but it's not going to be for that Valhalla community. I mean, it'll be for them too. But we want to expand it to make it so it's fun for high school kids. Yeah. So we can have competitions for high school kids. Because yeah. now you can say, okay, come in and do these exercises or these events like Atlas Bowls and have fun with it. And to see if it, if it can expand. Valhalla is a special place. I mean, where people strain train. We have people here to come to, to go in there too. And that community is becoming bigger, but it's also gets its kickoff. And the kickoff is, again, where do you go with the, with the strong men? You have men and women, especially and women, that get stronger and they like that strength. And then now it becomes functional strength. Like whether you're 
carrying stones or carrying farmer's Runners. walk or anything. It becomes a semi-functional thing. So now if you're carrying farmer's walk, you can say, okay, now I can carry the, like the groceries better. And you feel it. You feel it almost instantly. You go like, oh, this is really cool. If you look at strong men and older people and this whole strong person issue, for years, people in fitness, the general fitness market said, you need to be aerobically fit to get your heart so that you can live longer and you can be healthier. Then that went on for years in the fitness industry. But then all of a sudden, somebody came along and said, wait, my grandmother or my mother is 50 or 60 years old. Aerobically fit don't mean so much, but she can't get off the floor when she gets down there. And then somebody said, well, because she's not strong. She doesn't have the muscles strong. Then all of a sudden the light went off or went on. And people said, wait a second, maybe this aerobic thing isn't as dominant as it should be or as important as it should be. Maybe we should look into strength training. And that's when strength training in the elderly became big. And that, again, here in Norway, everybody's aerobically fit, or most older people are. Most that generation can probably be aerobically fit better than anybody in, anybody in the States, in that group. But what they need to do is, now they don't, aren't strong. They can't get off the floor. They had bad back. They had bad knees. And you don't get you don't get your knees better, or especially your lower back. You don't get your lower back better by walking. You get it better by going to a gym where people know what they're doing, which of course is us. <laughs> okay. And they give you a couple exercises. And we have one guy that comes in here that's 70. He does two or three exercises and he leaves, and then he comes back a month later and says my back feels better. Period. That's so he's not into like he's got a couple of issues that we deal with. I mean, simple things that you can you're not really medically qualified, but simple exercises that you can try here, try this or try that that have been known in the industry, not medically researched that this is going to be the the research says. <laughs> you know, obviously I'm not big on that whole thing. If you could live your life again, would you change anything? Yeah, I change. I probably would change some stuff. I would never change anything because then I wouldn't be able to sit here and talk with you. you know, that's but, one of the biggest mind blowing things. There's so many directions you can go in yeah. life. You know, I, you can't change anything. So for me to say, for example, would I change anything? In some respects, yeah. Okay, but then if I look step step back and look in other respects, no. Like for instance. I didn't have insurance in the States, yeah, yeah, and I never could find, I was a player in the States, okay? But then when I, my whole dream was to be this Iron Man thing, but then when I got out there, I found out the guy who ran Iron Man wasn't, he wasn't really who he said he was. He really used people, like the whole bodybuilding and movie star industry, especially the bodybuilding, they use the writers because of their passion. They don't pay them anything. They live in, Ma in Malibu and the writers, you know, live wherever they can. Yeah. And he was the same way. He was a photographer for Weeder and Weeder used him, you know. And then I said, okay, I don't know. I had to change the writers. And in the States, it's really easy. We're, we're known for like every 10 years changing directions. Like I could have been an auto mechanic and I was really good at it. When I was on the police force, if I had stayed on the police force, I would have been the chief of police on a hundred man police force, you know? And you look at different directions if I hadn't gone to, you know, but so am I, am I happy here now? Yeah, I mean, my life is pretty good. <clears throat> you know, we have a farm in Vala, I rebuilt that, it took me 14 years to rebuild that. I have a wife that I'm still married to, which is unique in the world today. I have two girls. And one of them had a lot of problems, like a lot of problems when she was younger with the... Yeah, and, I know. And, okay. The other one's like a typical teenager and my health is sucks, you know? I mean, I got more fucking things wrong with me than... But my spirit is good. And that's the same like I see with you is 
Nobody knows the pain you go through at night. See, that's the thing people, and nobody really cares. No, that's, that's just, you're just a weirdo, yeah. okay? But they don't know what made you. That's true. And when you end up, and them asking you to do stuff for them because you become, you get what you want. Because I can see there's not very many people that have passion like you. Whether I agree with the way you're going with it is one thing, but <clears throat> nobody in Norway has passion. So you're in a situation where like, I'm the only one out here. Yes. And that was with me with the training when yes. I started the Ironman training system. Yes. Nobody did what I did. Mm. Nobody believed in it. And I took it to the, I went to the top with it. We have uh, some different kinds of ABMAT here. First we're going to explain what the ABMAT is. Yes. The ABMAT, when I first started with, for instance, abdominal training. Yes. I would have bodybuilders in my gym. This was years ago before the whole drug thing was done. And the way to do body, to, the way to do abdominals was you would sit, I would, I would watch people, girls and guys, do sit-ups for an hour straight. Oh my goodness. Three days a week or four days a week. That was how you trained abdominals. For an hour, try doing sit-ups. And this is the, the common way do abdominal training. Nobody did lower back training, but the, except for deadlifts. The common way to do abdominal training was an hour. Nobody got any abs from it. I, and even if they got abs, it was like in bodybuilding, it's usually from the diet, which is still the same thing today. But then I got into <coughs> analyzing, okay, is that the way the abdominal muscles work? Because nobody does 100 reps for their biceps. And nobody does 100 reps for their chest, like with a pectoral machine. So I talked to my physical therapist, who was my teacher in all the muscles, and he, he, was, a, he was a golfer, and he could care less about bodybuilding, but he would teach me about how muscles worked. And his attitude was, this is how they work, and they're, not, they're attached to a frame on a bone, and I don't care what you bodybuilders say, but this is how the muscles work. So if you look at the abdominals, when I when I stopped and I I have a, a, a skeleton that I've had for thir thirty years. Yeah. And if you look at a skeleton, you'll see the spinal column, and you'll see a six pack of abs on the front. Yeah. Okay. So you have the skeleton, and the abdominals are attached from the lower rib cage. Yeah. To the pel to the pelvis. Yes. That's simple. Yes. There's nothing to do with the legs. No. Okay. There's no. There's no. nothing. There's no abdominals attached. And if you look at the function, take all the. This is how you work your abs out. And you take the function of the abdominals. You see. Okay. They have vertebrae in the spine that look like little bicep axes here in Norway. And you have a six pack of abs, and you have the lower part of the abs. But do they start from a flat floor? No, they start from back, say 15 to 30 degrees, like your your back is arched. You can see it like with gymnastic yes. people. You can see it with skiers. They they don't stop straight up and down. So I said, why are you doing sit-ups? Because you feel that in your stomach. So now you feel a burn, but is the burn from your abdominals or the fact that you, your upper body weighs so much that you get a, like an isometric burn in your stomach. So theoretically then, like if you held up an arm, a bar in your arm curl position, at some point you would get a burn in your biceps yes. or your shoulders because you're holding it up. Or skiers will sit against the wall with their legs bent at 90 degrees. Yes. 90 degrees? Yeah, 90 degrees. And they get a burn in their legs. Do you work your, your thighs that way? No, you don't. So what you're saying is, wait a second, well, how do the abdominals work? And then I looked, then I started to say, okay, what's the arch, the range of motion? And to make a long story short, we started to, we, we came up with, I had, a, I had a piece of rubber and I ground it down with a razor blade and with a, with a chainsaw and got it in a certain direction and I made it into a pad that you could put underneath you that would give you an arch and when you did a sit-up, because you were against this pad, you actually didn't have to use your hip flexors. 
So now what you could do is you could find, okay, the, the, the spinal muscles at the top of the spine are really flexible. That's why you can bend over really easy. But as you get to the bottom of the spine, because you look at your spine and it goes into your pelvis. Yes. The abdominals actually, the lower part of the abdominals actually kind of rotate a little bit your spine inside your pelvis. Yes. It's maybe about 10 centimeters. And then I went, oh, wait a second. That's about how big the pot belly is on a woman. Yes. And that's the, the center part of the human body. Yes. Is to divide the upper and lower part of the body, you have a major weak link in the lower abdominals. Yes. Women have really major problems when, for instance, they get pregnant and they get these pains in their lower back because their stomach comes over, but their lower abdominal muscles are so weak, they can't hold their pelvis steady. And if you look at any woman when She's in a bathing suit, she always gets that lower pot belly. Yeah. And that's from this part of your vertebrae. And that's the medical biomechanical reason for it. And if you ask any physical therapist, and you ask any orthopedic surgeon, they look at you and I go, is this true about the way the abdominals work and how the spine bends? And they go, they look at you with this look like, well, yeah, why wouldn't you know that? <laughs> I said, then why do people do all these strange abdominal exercises? And then they start to think and they go like, you know, you're right. So when we came out with the ab mat, it started to work. And then we, people started to get, they felt different in their abdominals. And then we said, okay, are the abdominal muscles made of any other fiber type than your bicep, like your bicep muscles are made of some fast twitch muscles. The muscles in your lower leg are made of slow twitch muscles because you use them all the time. And we started to ask, like, are the muscles in your abdominals any different? Now that we figured out how we could work the abdominals, because anytime you try to use an ab mat, we can show you that this works your stomach muscles. And you can say, well, are the mu abdominal muscles made of any different muscle fiber types? So why do we have to do 100 reps? And why do we have to do, like, isometrics? Well, there's one muscle in the, that you can do isometrics, like with a planking. But that's not the whole reason to do it, because you don't do planking with your legs, so you don't do planking with your biceps, but your abdominals, there is a reason you can do it, but you have to do range of motion. So now we have people, I have women that can do sit-ups with 40 kilos on their chest. I had athletes that could do 20 kilos for 50 reps that were using high reps for strength and power in sports. So when I came up with the ad map, we had a, I had a manufacturer who we produced it. And then when we produce it, we find now people try to knock it off. So you say, okay, give me a quote on this ad map. This is what I want. This is the length I want. This is the, 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 the bend I want. And I want 15 degrees on one side. I want certain degrees on the other side because that's supposed to duplicate the range of motion of the abdominals. You see a lot of the abdominal muscles abats to come out now because the patent's over if they're too thick and people hurt their back because you just can't stretch that like not everybody's a gymnast that can go over backwards and the average person has a certain range that their spine can go so then we had somebody try to make it and then the problem becomes is they try to do it as cheap as possible so the rubber in it they, ch they cheap out on the rubber so that's when you buy it at Amazon you get cheap rubber, it looks good, and it'll break down and flatten out after a month. Yeah. So with the ad mat, and then, then we started to look at, okay, the abdominal muscles also round out, but they, they also go back, like your spine goes back, like if you put your shoulders back, your shoulders go back. If you say, if somebody says, put your shoulders back, just put your chest up. You find, you don't only arch your back, but you flex out your shoulders and your rib cage. Yes. So then we, the next version of the Abbott called the Abbott Extreme, you can actually flex your back back so that this goes back, so it goes back and you can actually use weights for that. Yeah. So now you have a whole view of training. Then you get into the downside. To try to tell a physical therapist or somebody who's been taught abdominal training for 100 years, 
They're afraid, not just here, but in all over, are afraid to say, you know, I was wrong, man. I'll, one thing I could do, or the people that I, the group that I hung out with, we were wrong every week. And I would come back to my gym in New Jersey, and people would say, okay, Fred, what did we do wrong this week? And I would just be ranting and raving again, like, this is what we did wrong, this is what I found out this week. And that's what made the whole difference, like with the advent now. And my feeling is, we've never had anybody not get results with it. Of course, you have to diet, okay? I can get your muscles as strong as you want. If you don't diet, or you don't eat properly, you're not going any place. Fred, isn't that uh, connected to, there is this uh, percentage, uh, uh, like a cake, percentage cake of if you have physical training, then you have diet, then you have sleep. There is like, training is so, so much, but diet is so much, but sleep is also. And I've always said that it's all a third, okay? When I, when I talk to people, the training is going to be what you wanted to do. It's fun. The cost hold or diet is not fun. And the sleep, you're never, everybody says you're going to get eight hours of sleep a day. I mean, it's so standard. You know, what is that? I don't know anybody that gets eight hours of sleep. That means you would have to go to bed, you'd have to go to sleep at 10 o'clock to get up at six o'clock in the morning. And nobody's going to do that. And if you do it, more power to you. So for me, when I teach, when I talk training to people, I deal a little bit with nutrition. I deal mostly with training <clears throat> and the sleep part you don't have to tell people how much sleep they're going to get they know how much sleep they should get kids could get a lot more sleep and they're not going to they're going to stay on the internet and if you want to battle it go go for it because it's not my deal you know like i'm not going to rant and rave about how much sleep you should get and how much good for it because they're not going to do it in our society today you're going to do what you can do it's the same thing with nutrition. When I have, to, when I deal with somebody with nutrition, first thing I do, they want me to set them up with a diet or a cost hold program. I say, okay, write down what you want, what you eat now. Write down for two days. And they go, well, let me tell you what I do. I go, no, 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 no. You write it down. And 50% of the time or 80% of the time, they're too lazy to even write it down mm. for me to do it. They just want me to, here's a nutrition program. Yeah. So in my career, I must have given out a thousand, a thousand nutrition programs because I had the passion, like, yeah, I want to help you. Now, write it down. And I find when people write down what they eat, especially here in Norway, nutrition education is really good here in Norway. Yes. And people really know, but it's still cheaper to get grandiose. And yes. it's still a lot more fun. And it's still a lot more fun to go to bakery, one of the pizza places. And now you're getting more and more restaurants and the food is becoming less expensive and less expensive. But should you eat at a, at a should you buy your own food? Of course, because when you get a, a quote unquote sandwich here, it's got one piece of shinka on it yeah. and one piece of cheese. And that is nothing in a nutrition sense. It's okay. just because Again, you have to look at the culture because people, why are we such a bread culture? No, I don't know any place in the United States where you can get fresh bread every day. You, you can get fresh bread, but it's a problem or it's a challenge. Here, you can't get processed bread. You can't go and buy Wonder Bread off the shelf in, <laughs> in, in, in Norway because the culture has always been, we're a bread culture or a potato culture. It's inexpensive but we're going to make the best bread possible we don't have a lot of money which meat is expensive and cheese is expensive and cheese is more difficult even more so we use one slice of br cheese bread which fills us up so now when people especially women have a cost hold program they have like connect bread <laughs> so they say well, i don't eat bread i eat connect bread and I said, like, well, you're still eating too much cheese, and you're, and you're not eat, you're not eating enough cheese, or you're not eating enough meat. Like, you never get enough protein. So what do you do? You pig out at night for dinner, so you get all that food in at one time, and your body doesn't know what all what to do with all that food at one time. So it stores most of it as fat anyway. You know, even though you're eating, I eat good at night for dinner. Well, yeah, 
but your body can't digest all of that food, oh. so you get fat because your body stores it. It's a machine. And, and I think, Fred, that uh, one of the things that I've noticed in uh, not only uh, people that I've hang around with, but in Norway in general, there is ma many people getting this celiacy, and uh, they can't have wheat, uh, and they can't have bread, and they can't have all these things. And I think that, just my personal opinion, that I think that may be connected that we have been bread fed so much of this over long, long time now that some people that have been born in the next generation don't can have it in their body. I'm not quite sure if it's yeah, but that's I don't know. You know, I can't I can't really tell you about that because of the fact that I'm not that kind of a doctor and stuff. It's, it's possible. You know, and it could, and, and it's a theory you could pursue, but I, I have no idea. And I, to tell you the truth, in my field, I don't care because it's like, okay, you go to the doctor and he says you can't eat bread or milk and that kind of thing. Fine, then don't eat it. You have you you don't have a lot of choices here what to eat, but you have enough choices, you know. And even now, <clears throat> if I don't want to eat vegetables, they have really good frozen packets of yeah. vegetables and and mixed vegetables and yes. stuff, and my wife makes mixed vegetables, and they come out pretty good. What kills people in Costco is all the syrups and all the additives and all the... Synthetics? Yeah, I mean, and if you want to deal with it, you deal with it. You know, and if you don't want to deal with it, I can't go home with you. Yeah, I can. If you want to pay me to go home and make your... I mean, it's really popular with professional athletes nowadays and I know guys that actually go home with people and go food shopping with them and make their dinners mm -hmm. and stuff and let me tell you they got a lot of money and people make a living from it and if that's what you want it's just like if you want clothes that somebody the right clothes for people you can always find somebody to go shopping with you yeah okay everybody has you know it's just what the, you, you want somebody to look stuff up on the internet you can always find somebody. To, well, you know, sometimes can find somebody. To do it. But Fred, could you tell a little bit about the difference of coaching world-class Olympic Ulena Biondalon contra regular healthy people? I don't feel there is it much difference. It isn't. No, because this whole you have to make specialty programs for top athletes. The strength training programs I set up, I would say that the basic athlete who's serious like for instance with the vipers or one of the uh, who plays sports and wants a straight training program is pretty much the same program that Ula Aina sets up with he might be a little bit more serious about some of the additives that go into it like the aerobic work and the spence the power work yeah. and muscle endurance but basically the strength program you can he runs when I trained him where I trained some of the professional athletes that whole everybody's got to have a different program, that's always a cop-out, but nobody tells you what the difference is. So in other words, you have to train an, a, an athlete has to have a specialty program. Okay, what exactly do you mean by that? Okay, give me, when I, say, when I set a program up, I have a plan, I have a program that comes out on a computer sheet that we can monitor that plan so when I get the results at the end of the month or end of two months, I can look at the results sheet and say, where did we go wrong? That's what I want to see for people. My pro I, can have, I can give you a plan, I can give you a program that can be monitored, and I can give you results. That's what people do with aerobics here in Norway. All the top coaches do the same thing. They, they take lactic acid periodically. They do a lot. They don't do it in strength training, and they don't do it in fitness. So in other words, when I give you a strength training program in fitness, the same program that's a top athlete, whether you will Aner or any of the people get, I can monitor it if I want, if you want to. I don't give them out anymore. Like it's not, I can monitor it. At the end of a month, you take a test in the beginning, you take a test at the end. If you're getting stronger, that means that something's going on in your body in a positive way. And I can, you can come in, I can show you all the graphs that are on my, on my webpage, www.fredkotz.com. 
you can see the graphs of what people start in a month and two months and my attitude is if you're getting stronger the, the, the muscles are so much part of the body then you're getting results and that's a positive thing in training and that's what my teacher taught me that's what you're looking for so if you're getting stronger that means you're stimulating more muscle so now if you're not eating <laughs> or if you're eating terrible that's the thing you've got to look at and I'm not going home with you you know and I'm not going to go to the grocery store with you and that's not my job but even in the gym situation when you go to like these big gyms or CrossFit places where CrossFit is really good because you can really tell if you're getting better or not I mean that's kind of something that's because it's a program they have a, situ, a set program that you do and you can tell if you get better in that set program in a month when you go to a fitness place they go on a bike and run ride the bike for a half hour okay what's that mean that now you can mood train yeah and you don't know at the end of the month if you get better you say well I've gone for a month so I must be getting better are you I mean you're getting something sure I mean it's better than nothing and I, but are you feeling better about yourself? You know, if you go for a month and you go to the gym once a month and, or every a couple of days and you say to yourself, I went, but do you feel good? Uh, yeah, I feel better. But are, how many people are really happy with themselves so they can say, I got results? Like, look, cool, this is like, I, like how many times you say, well, did you lose a kilo or did you lose two kilos? Or, and, and, cases where you want to gain weight did you gain a kilo then you're getting then you have something to, to judge by but people don't yeah you're, you're right Fred and I, and I think that one of the um, things I don't know if I'm right but it's my opinion yeah it's your opinion and it's my opinion that you may be right uh, <laughs> uh, we've talked about a lot of things and um, the Navy SEALs uh, I would like to talk a little bit about how is that mental train training in the seals. You can watch it on TV. Mental training is like I, I, I couldn't even imagine. I mean, you see it on TV. I, just, I never saw any part of it. I saw them doing sit-ups one day, and I know I don't know how much they actually like the stuff that I wrote was in the Navy SEALs training guide. And I don't know how much they do. I mean, I can't say that they follow my stuff because I don't know. <clears throat> And probably not, but you, you know, the mental thing—that's a whole—that's a whole different world. The mental training is individual thing, a passion thing. It's like business. The guy who works on a computer 24 hours or 18 hours a day—I can't judge. You know, that's just that's a personal thing. You know, and here, if you talk to somebody here in Norway, for example. You can tell right away how much passion they have for anything. I mean, whether it be a football player, whether it be you and you're ranting and raving about all the stuff that you do. You have a podcast. It takes a lot of work, okay? And so to me, talking to somebody like you, you have a passion, whether you're in the right direction or whether it's like I agree with it or not my deal. If somebody comes in here to train, like I said, I had a woman come in here the other day who had a program off the... Uh, Online. The, online, yeah. And I said, well, you know, I'll give you, some, I'll teach you some stuff. I said, but <clears throat> if you're not really into it, I don't want to take my time to do it. She goes, no, 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 I really want to hear what you have to say. And I can read on her that she is interested. Yeah. Okay. So I can speak to somebody or I can speak to one of the kids and see if they're really interested. Or... If a parent is a guy who wants to get it, fix his back, is he really interested? We have guys that come in here, especially now, older men, because I'm getting older, and have a real problem with their lower back and their shoulders and they bend over. Yeah. It's because their abdominals are real weak, so they, they move their center of gravity forward, so they can't stand up straight. If you look at older people walk around, they're all bent over, yes. because their abdominals and, and their core are so weak, they have to bend over to get to walk. So they're actually walking and, and they're, yes. they're not stepping, they're actually, they're using the momentum of their upper body. Yeah. And nobody ever says, stand up straight. Like I have older guys that come in here and I go, stand up straight. It's like, yes, mom. <laughs> you know, if somebody says to me, 
I want to be on a coastal program. I asked him every day, what'd you eat today? And that was one of my things is, if you don't want me to ask you, then just say, Fred, you're not gonna hurt my feelings. It's like I tell people, if you don't want to follow what I have to say, it's cool, just pay your membership every month. <laughs> you know, you were talking about the seals. It's just, it's an avenue I can't cover because it's just, <clears throat> my passion for training was a passion that I did all the time, every day. Your passion for what you do is that way. You can tell on people's passion, like the SEALs guys, their, their passion is in a whole different world. I trained some strongmen here. I mean, you talked about uh, Valhalla the other day. You go up there, anybody could go up there and watch. These guys are in a whole different world. They have a passion that's just unstoppable. They're every Sunday, they've got the guys, the girls, they have a passion, and it's just, I'm with them every step of the way. Kiki here, is the well, most probably well-known female strong person. I think uh, Kiki barely owns this six-time Norway strongest woman, and yeah, is uh, one of the most passion. She has a passion. She has a passion that, can you define it? No, she's got it. You she can see it, it every day. You can see it every day on her Facebook or on her, on her Instagram. And that, to me, is how you read people's passion. Yeah. Go to, go to the high school here and see if how many people have the passion, how many teachers have the passion. Yeah, for instance, uh, there is, uh, uh, he is uh, much, uh, or much, uh, depends on if you see much, but he's heavier than me, Hjetil Finnes, he has passion for strong men. Yeah, he trains here. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, these guys have passion for stuff, you know, and <clears throat> it's just the way it is. You know, and it just comes from some place, whether it's their childhood or their upbringing or just a challenge that they have. It's cool. And uh, I, I don't think it's uh, something that I want to take too much time talking about, but we got to dive a little bit into how the situation of the Bear Cave and COVID-19 have been. Bear Cave and COVID-19 is fine. <clears throat> My partner here has, we make people during the COVID crisis. <clears throat> of course, we were closed for a couple of months. But when we did start to open, people could train here, like for, with doctor's notes and stuff. We had a real strict system where everybody had to wash, to have their spray their hands when they came in. Everybody has to, there's not bottles placed around to take a wash the machines off of it. Everybody has to have a bottle with the disinfectant in it and a towel with them every minute of every training session. And every weight here, the weights here must have been washed off. This is the cleanest any gym in the world's ever been. I mean, it's like nobody has to dust the weights or the, or the equipment because everybody is so good about it because the members here, when we said this is what we can do or we can't do it, even the young kids, they appreciate the fact that we take the time to open, so they're not going to play the game. It's like, I mean, I don't want to do that shit, you know. <laughs> Everybody does it great, and so we've had no, I mean, bar the fact that a lot of people had, to, you know, quit because they were scared at home and or whatever. Their, again, it's their home life and their personal situation. Yes. It's not the gym situation. It's usually the home. It's the same thing with how serious you're about training, yes. how serious you're about cost hold, how serious you're about sleeping. Yes. A lot of people just were really, really uncomfortable with the whole COVID mm -hmm. thing. But coming in here was no problem. We've never had a problem with it. <clears throat> and we made it so that people could train whenever we could, when we had groups and then, and, and we had people in here to supervise, and, and it worked out fine. That's really, <clears throat> really good to hear because uh, I've seen um, both uh, some small gyms and also big, uh, bigger gyms have to like close down for longer times and lose memberships. And, and that's stuff. what we talked about before. Yeah, it's. It's the people, it's the instructors in the gym who have the passion, but they can't say to somebody, you can't get a young instructor that's certified to say to a businessman, wipe your machine off. No, you can't. 
or you can't say to them, if you don't wipe your machine off, you're going to have to leave. Yeah. You, you can't do it. It's, it's the, it's the way the system is. Okay, you got a membership. Now you suddenly you get this crisis. It's the same with the, with the like smaller gyms you're talking about. People, it's too much trouble. It's too much trouble. It's like, oh god, I got to tell somebody else to, to wipe off the machines. I got to tell somebody else to, to like, okay. You got to put the weights away. No, you got to wipe that machine. You didn't wipe that machine off. Yeah. And people don't want to do it. And as the fact is here, we did it, it worked, and people respected it. And that is, I guess, what you could say the difference between here, the way my partner and I, Raymond, and I work. People do it, we give them the equipment, we take care of stuff, and it's like you were saying before it's a family so it's not a family of just strong men who love each other but it's a family of a gym who when you come here you're part of it if you choose to be yeah and that's to me that's always what a gym is supposed to be like a training center whether it be it's whether it's a big training center or a small or a small place whether you're getting paid a hundred kroner an hour to be there or you own the place it's got to be like it's got to be a group, you know, that, that, that understands the whole situation. And we happen to be lucky with that. That's really good to hear, uh, Fred. And I, I think that um, I'm going to just pan this little camera around me and out here and says, on the wall over there, it says, just results. And um, how many good excuses have you ever heard? I've heard every excuse in the world. I mean, the biggest excuse now I hear from my daughter who started training, and it's the classic excuse. I hurt my arm, I can't train. <laughs> well, what happened to your legs and your abs and your lower <laughs> back, okay? So when you talk about excuses, that's the classic excuse people have. I hurt my leg. I, I hurt my leg skiing last week. Okay, well, did you hurt your stomach? No, no. Did you hurt your upper body? No, no. no. Then why can't you just train the rest of your body? Oh uh, well, uh, they're looking for an excuse to, you know, they don't have to. Pay, they have a passion, but it's only a certain level. Yeah. And that's the, you know, that's the excuse. I mean, of course, you're always going to have people who are sick. People aren't in the mood. You know, going summertime is vacation time, yeah. especially here in Norway. The one thing I noticed that people in the summertime, it's so short of a part of the year that it's nice. In the summertime, people just go outside. They, they fix their house, they do whatever they have yeah. to do. And that's, in the States so much, it's a not so, it's a little different because in fact, the weather's nicer for a long yeah. period of time. People have a little more passion, like on weekends. <clears throat> in the States, people are off. So the gyms are packed on weekends, but there's a place for them to go out to breakfast yeah. afterwards. It's oh, it's part of the ritual. So you could go to one of the pancake houses, and we always trained in the morning, and went to one of the pancake houses or a place for breakfast. We don't have that culture here. <clears throat> you don't go out to an inexpensive breakfast. It's actually I don't think there's any place you can really go out to breakfast. And. Uh, the coolest thing was when McDonald's started having egg McMuffins. I haven't had one here yet, but it was my favorite. But that's the excuses you hear. Yeah, I would um, I would try to uh, remember how it goes up here and tell it to you, Fred, that one of the best quotes I've heard about the excuses is that everyone got one, just like an asshole, and it stinks. Yeah, but... <laughs> I don't quite use that terminology, but it, it comes down to like, yeah, everybody can come up with a million excuses. And, and it's just really, it comes to, to the same thing. It's like, what do you want? And just say, look, I'm not in the mood to train today. Okay, well, I don't train. You know, you don't have to come up with excuses. But people, that's, that's people, the general people, that's the way they look at it. So that's fine. Again, it's not something that I worry too much about. I can, I can make fun of people like, yeah, <clears throat> you hurt your shoulders, so why do you have? Why can't you train your legs? Just, if they want to, fine. If they don't, then I just—it's not my—it's not what I do. 
I have uh, one of my uh, earlier favorite questions on the podcast, um, and I would like to hear your answer. What's the meaning of life? <laughs> or what your your opinion, or what do you think the meaning of life is? I, I really don't have, you know, you're getting really, that's really a philosophical question. <laughs> Dana, I really can't, what to be, like, you live it as you go along. You know, I mean, it's just, I have no, philosophical view of that kind of thing. I'm sorry, but it's just, <clears throat> you do the best you can. You follow what you, you know, like, okay, if you have a passion, you follow it. I'm in a, from a from a culture in the States where we're more apt to follow that because, like, if we have a, a, a passion or something, it's easier to find people around you that have that passion you can hang out with here or in Europe, it's a whole different thing because of the social systems in here or Germany and other places. You're kind of directed to what your career is going to be. You know, here you have to have a certain grade point average to go to a medical school or dental school. And of course, you don't have enough doctors. And the social system, you know, people have abused it. You know, I mean, physical therapists. That, abused it for years and then they changed the whole system and it's really not my I enjoy it myself here I, I love being in Norway I'm glad I'm not in the States right now and that's I just cruise along so my meaning of life is just do the best you can and it kind of all flows to in the direction you are what you become as you go along so you do the, you're going to make mistakes you're going to be make good decisions and you just go from there you know I, I can't really yeah I'm sorry but, but I can't no, really there's no to, no, like no need to be sorry for it I think that's a good uh, answer because I think we all have different opinions and different answer on that question and uh, I would rather hear what's the be best tip uh, on breaking your own barrier of comfort to get it, to get it you, going uh, with your body, like man. You're so it. programmed by the media. Yeah. At some point, I feel you have to just sit down and say, "What do you want?" If you sit down, and what do you want? Then you can look on the internet and find out people who want that stuff. Yes. Okay. Because you're in that situation now. So, in other words, if you want to build a boat. You've got plenty of places where you can figure out to build a boat. And now you got to get off your ass and go out to some of the boat building places and see what they, what you can do at your level. If you want to get fit, what you say is, okay, how much do I really want this? What do I want to do? And the reality of it is, in the fitness industry, if you want to just fit in with the crowd and say, I belong here, then you join one of the big places and you go from there. And you, you, but at, when you get into a goal, then you have to start to say, okay, is this the right question? So you start to look around. And that, and that depends on, for instance, I have a lot of people that come in here, <clears throat> we set them up on a program, and then they want to go, for instance, to speaker and because it's a cooler, cooler atmosphere there than it is here. So they take our information, they go to speaker, and that's a good decision they make, you know. Or they go to speaker and they say, "Well, yeah, no, this is really a great atmosphere, but I can't get any, I can't get anything done here because there's too many things going on." So they come to a smaller gym. So <clears throat> that's you have to kind of decide. I think the first thing you have to do is decide what you want to do and, yeah. if, and, and how much you really want it. Yeah. I think uh, we've been covering a lot of things and I think that one of the things that you kind of uh, put a uh, finger on the nail or so to speak is you, you got to have a life goal. Uh, you got to set a goal for yourself to work towards it or else you're just drifting around. You have to have a goal for the moment. You know, I mean, if you can get a life goal, I don't know, you know, if you can get a life goal, a change, I'm from a place where, or a generation where it changed week to week. Mm -hmm. You know, like 
I wanted to be a cowboy, then I became a police officer. And, I, and then I, when I was on a police officer, I didn't, I, I really got into fitness, so I wanted to get into that because I wanted to be more independent. And your goals can change, but <clears throat> if you have a goal, then go for it. Or you have, what, for instance, some of the past generations here where you just exist and you move along the way the, the system shows you. Yes. And it's really easy to do it here because it's real common for people to just, this is what your job is, this is what your career is going to be, and you just go to the office every day and you do this. And, but that's changing a lot. The internet is changing a lot, but it's still not changed here where people would say, this is what I, this is what I wanted to do in life. And they, but now it takes pain to do it. Yeah. And that becomes the issue. Now you have to like, okay, I want to be a strong man. Okay, fine. Now, if you really want to be a strong man, now you have to go up to Oslo, find an Olympic coach that can show you how to do certain techniques yes. to be a better strong man. Yes. Or you can just try to keep, go to the gym every day and get stronger and say, well, I'm a strong man because I'm doing the events. Yeah. It's, Fine, that's good, but don't say I can't be a strong man until you explore all the different avenues that you have at your that you have at your hands, for example. So, in other words, here, if you want to get stronger, just go. You go to a gym like this, you can get stronger because the atmosphere is such. Yes. But if you want to be, quote unquote in the strongman world, then you go to Valhalla and see what they do. Now yes. you see the extremists, yes. okay? And they'll let you in there anytime you want. It's a yeah. private club that you can go in there and you'll see the guys that are strong and crazy. So that's the extreme. Then you see, then you go to the Olympic sports and see what they do. You can go to the powerlifters and see what they do. Like I, I listen to a really good, uh, it's called Iron Radio. And it's a, it's a powerlifter guy has it and the nutrition people, I listen to that. So you see the different avenues and then you can choose where you where you want to be. Yeah. I think we've been uh, going on for uh, just about an hour, Fred. I think that's uh, really great. I want to say thank you so much. And um, I know that you can read Norwegian, but I like to say it in uh, English as well, that no is not meant to be sitting on your ass. So I think it's time for me to get off my ass and get into training. and. Okay, Try cool, this man. beautiful place. Thanks. I'm really grateful for for this. No so, stay true, stay you. You are loved. Peace out. If you can hate it, then you can love it. Instagram is my SSShow2020. Netsiami3sm.no Du er elsket.